I really hate doing this to Meek, man. <laughs> I really do, man. Meek seemed like a dynamite guy, man. I ain't even gonna lie, man. Meek seemed like a dynamite guy, man. Good dude, man. Um, but, <laughs> you know, sometimes you just don't want to record everything because what you think may be a good thing, they doing a, you may be doing a good thing, may be viewed as bad to other people. And other people may not have all the information. Now, I've covered this story with these water boys on my other channel, Ock Nation News. Link in the description box. We've covered this since the story began in the summer. It's a huge story in Atlanta, local news. Hasn't gotten any national attention, and I think you're going to understand why the woke media has not <laughs> given this story any national attention. This huge Atlanta story, why they have completely buried it on CNN and MSNBC and other channels like that. And also YouTubers. But let's get into it. Let's talk about this story now, because you've probably seen groups of boys selling bottled water around Atlanta, and you may have read on social media how some have gone violent. Tonight, we're hearing from a woman who says they stole her purse and her car. She sent us a picture of her black eye. Channel 2's Michael Seiden live with us tonight, and Michael... Now, let's just, right there. This could have been Meek. Support, what are we supporting though? What is we supporting? The water hustle. But what is we supporting, honestly? Yo, bitch, my mama, bitch, bro, we out here selling water trying to stop. What we supporting, yo, the water is on y'all. My mama sold it, bro, we out here trying to you can't let me one time, bro. This could have been Meek Mill. And a lot of people are criticizing Meek Mill without knowing all the information. This is not an isolated incident. You've talked to several victims who are now calling on the mayor, the city council, the police department to put a stop to what many are now saying is a growing problem. In Jovita, Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms at times has called some of these water boys up and coming young entrepreneurs. In fact, she put together an advisory committee. She's asking for some suggestions on how they can help teach these kids business uh, skills, how, how to manage money. Meantime, though, we are hearing from several victims who tell us enough is enough. It's time to get the kids off the street. How'd you get the black guy? That's from when I fell out the when he when I fell out the car and hit the pavement. Antoinette Stevens says she is still in pain following a frightening encounter with a group of teenagers selling bottled water on University Avenue in Southwest Atlanta Friday afternoon. So I gave him a couple dollars. And then all the other boys ran up to my car and was like, oh, oh give me a dollar. He's not going to share. Give me, give, me some dollar. give me some money. Steven says one of the boys reached through her window and snatched her purse. She tried to chase after him, and another teen jumped into the driver's seat and took off. I jumped through the window and tried to get my car, tried to get him to stop. And he drove into oncoming traffic and crashed the car and then ran. Steven showed us these photos of her damaged BMW. She picked it up on Sunday after spending several hours in the hospital. And she's not alone. According to police reports we obtained since June 10th, officers have investigated more than two dozen incidents, including two shootings and three other situations where teens threaten people with guns. And okay, so... All right, so... Have Meek Mill... Had them boys done the same thing, maneuver with Meek Mill. Snatch something out Meek car. Now, Meek got a driver, so it would have been different. But let's just say Meek was alone. <laughs> Snatch something out his car. He get out, chase the dude, another kid jump in. <laughs> that's, that's a move that they do, okay? And a lot of people are criticizing Meek for this, and they have no idea what they are talking about. Running 
for traffic. I've come to the conclusion that we can do better uh, for our kids here in the city than having them on the corner selling water. President of the Atlanta City Council, Felicia Moore, recently made her concerns public on Facebook after visiting several locations where she saw dozens of kids working the corners. She's calling for an immediate stop to street water sales. Moore says right now, officers are being told to stand down. Uh -huh. All right, so... Officers are being told to stand down. Atlanta, this is what T.I. talked about. Black excellence. Black mayor. Black city council. Black attorney general. Usually, I don't know if currently, because they've had some changes at the police department, but 90% of the time, black police chief. There's nothing Trump runs in, in Atlanta. Nothing. He don't make no laws. He runs the federal government. He ran the federal government for the last four years. Very little Biden can do. Even though his, his policies on the federal level can trickle down to Atlanta. You know, I mean, a few of them. Because he's... Democrat and that's a democratically run city over 70 80 percent single mother homes in, in Atlanta black mayor female mayor black city council black attorney general black police chief And you got kids running around like it's the third world trying to sell waters to make a couple dollars. Are you serious? And you got T.I. and Killer Mike down there. Black, black raptivists. You got all these wealthy blacks down there. And you got these kids running around broad daylight assaulting people, stealing people's cars, shooting at people in broad daylight while they sell them, allegedly selling water. I have heard uh, from police officers, supervisors, and that, that that was a dictate from the mayor's office to, to not enforce uh, any of the rules while this task force was working. But our photojournalist recently captured this video of APD officers breaking up a large group of kids selling water in Midtown. Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms says the current situation is a major problem and has instructed APD officers to step up their enforcement. She believes change is needed, which is why she and the city council formed a task force earlier this month. The goal is to come up with solutions for these children. You have some kids out there who have a great entrepreneurial spirit. But clearly, it, it's not directed and harnessed. For now, she has this message. To parents, don't allow your children to go out there to the extent possible. Please keep them off of the corners. And Wrong, Keisha Bottom. Parent. You said parents. It's 80% single mother homes in Atlanta. Parent. Not parents. Parent. Casey Venning is the executive director of the nonprofit Helping Empower Youth and is trying to help these yeah, kids. So for the past uh, two and a half to three months, we have been working with some of the young men known as the Atlanta Water Boys. She says she and her organization are keeping watch over 20 boys between the ages of 14 and 19. They're often seen selling water near Mercedes-Benz Stadium. That means rent, um, utility bills, making sure there's food on the table for their younger siblings. Because we are in the middle of a pandemic, it's not as easy for them to go and get a part-time job. I call crap on that, but I, you got this, this program with this woman is taking care of 20 of these water boys, paying their rent and f putting food on their table for them and their younger siblings. If one of them boys turn around and snake her and do something bad to her, man, we got to ride for this lady, man. <laughs>
Because that's what happens. You see people give them money and they turn around and snake them and steal their cars or assault them or do something to them. This lady's doing that times a thousand. So she's definitely putting herself in the line of fire because these boys are not like entrepreneurs. These are little street toughs, man. Street hoodlums, hood thugs, man. You can see it in their eyes. If you can't, if you can't look at these boys and listen to them talk and look into their eyes and see their demeanor, they tell that these boys ain't little hoodlums, little, 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 little um street street hoods, street urchins, hood boogers. There's something wrong with you. You ain't got your third eye open. But it's easy to find jobs. I can tell you that much. It's easy to find jobs now. Especially if that age, if you're willing to push a cart, they call it lot tax. The people who, who, who collect the carts in the parking lot, you're going to make way more money than these guys. Collecting carts and pushing them back in front of the store at the supermarket or at the Target or at the Walmart. Being a sales associate on the floor at Target or Walmart. A cashier. Being in overnight stock. See, I know a bunch of kids, man, young guys. It's easy to get jobs. They hire those jobs at Target and Walmart. And then Uber. You, all right, you don't have a car, you can't do Uber. Um, any store, any department stores is hiring right now. Any department store is hiring. All those places are hiring. So I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't believe that it's, I think that these guys like the freedom of being out there on the street. Plus, they street guys. That's what they want to do. You got to understand that, like, a lot of the hustling and the dudes that hustling and so not, they want to do that. They make fun of nine to five people. They look at people who nine to five like squares. So, I mean, I don't believe that uh, good, it's good what she's doing to, to help these kids, but I don't believe for a second that there's no jobs down there. Vinning estimates that about 500 to 600 kids are selling water across the city. Atlanta business owner Ryan Madelon says one of those water boys robbed him of $900. I mean, it's lawless is what's going on here right now. It's crazy to think that we should give them the right to be able to walk around our cars at a red light. At first, it was just, you know, some boys trying to make some money. But now I feel like they're just opportunists and they try to find women and or somebody that looks vulnerable. You know, she made a good point there. They try to pray. These these water boys pray on what? Because a lot of dudes in Atlanta, they got some thoroughbreds down in Atlanta. And I'm sure Meek was riding with some thoroughbreds too. Meek might have not been preyed upon because he's a big guy. Meek's like 6'2". You know, he, he got that look in his eye, that... that you know, that Philly hood look in his eye when they can look and say, okay, I'm looking at myself. I'm not looking at a vet. I'm not looking at a piece of prey. I'm not looking at food. I'm looking at, I'm looking right at a dude that's just like me. So they think twice. Then he has other dudes in the car. So it's interesting that these guys, how they treat white people and how they treat um, women. Because they're more predatory towards women and white people because they view them as being more vulnerable and Martin Luther King Jr. Drive in Atlanta. CBS 46's Ashley Thompson. She joins us live in Atlanta right now. Ashley, you've been covering the story and the woman left the scene apparently, but things escalated when she returned with some backup. That's right, Sean, and it's starting to get warmer outside, so we're starting to see more of these young teens on the roadways selling bottles of water. It's typically safe, but a couple's encounter just a few days ago ended in gunfire. I really think it's a good idea for the, for the young kids to find something different to do other than what's known in different neighborhoods. You'll often see them right off the interstate capitalizing on buildup at traffic lights. They keep them from doing negative things. They help them keep money in their pocket. You never know what their money capable of. You know what I'm saying? 
the money helping them out in any many, many ways. But on Tuesday, around 6.45 in the evening, two teenagers selling bottled water in southwest Atlanta gave this line of work a bad rap. Atlanta police say a woman exiting I-285 onto Martin Luther King Jr. Drive was asked to buy water. When she declined, one of the teens threw a bottle at her. When, when you're in a car, it's pretty dangerous, you know, with people coming up to the car. It's, it's pretty dangerous. Police say the woman came back with her husband to speak with the teens. That's when one of the young men opened fire. I think that was really bad because, like, you can't make people buy water. If somebody doesn't want it, you know, just let them go. Fortunately, the couple was not struck. Atlanta police tracked down the teens responsible, charging a 15-year-old with aggravated assault and possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony. A 17-year-old was charged with disorderly conduct and terroristic threats. I buy it. I always try to encourage it and uh, contribute to it and support it, but I don't give myself a chance to get too close to that because, like I say, there's the Madonna using you never. See this brother? He, see, he, he he playing a fifty. He trying to say the right thing because he don't want to be called names. He not supporting these young people. These young people are <laughs> now since Meek Mill. Only gave them dudes twenty dollars. Not everybody got don't. Everybody just love it when little hoodlums run up on their car now, right? Homie said, "I don't get too close." <laughs> Look, just take the buddy ball it up and throw it at him. Roll the window down, crack the joint, and just slide it through like that. And make sure your doors is locked. So they preying on women mostly because women are more vulnerable. And they're less likely to be aware. They got that motherly instinct. Brother like this, he he looking at them dudes run up on his car. He probably lock his doors, probably roll the window down and just a teensy weensy bit, crack it. You no, know, so a lot of people spoke about this situation without knowing exactly all that it, it entails. Selling bottled water today. They tell us they do it to make money and to stay out of trouble. They say the job can be dangerous for them as well. Live in Atlanta, Ashley Thompson, CBS 46 News. Support, what are we supporting though? What is we Them some rough looking little kids, man. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you, Jack. Them some rough looking little kids, man. And it's, what they say, 500 of them on the streets every day. Downtown, different little highways selling that water. Listen, man. Oh, and they praying on women, taking advantage of women. In developing tonight, new video shows a female driver surrounded by at least five older teens who jump on her runner boards as she's stuck in traffic on an Atlanta interstate. The heavily viewed Instagram post has even surprised Atlanta police officers. This is just the latest incident involving the teens known as Water Boys. Fox Eyes Morris Stiggs is live in northwest Atlanta with a closer look at that video and the reaction. Morse. There is a tactic, tactic used by some of the more aggressive water boys that Atlanta police, they want to warn you about that. Now let's set up this video. It is on the interstate. Traffic is stacked up. There's a female motorist who is stuck as several of these older teenagers jump on her runner boards. I want you to watch and listen to this heavily viewed Instagram post. Look at these kids. 
it's not just the motorists in the white SUV caught by surprise, but onlookers cannot believe how five older teenagers, so-called water boys, climb onto the side of her vehicle, apparently to get money or who knows. Oh, she's moving and these guys are still on her car. And we show the clip to some female residents. It's terribly upsetting every time I read about it. What, what could she do? Um, there's nothing that she can do. She's, she's stuck. You know, it looked like she handled it as safely as she could by trying to get out. Terrifying and dangerous, and nobody should be put in that situation. I would be pretty frightened if that happened to me, especially if I had my kids in the car. The boys took the opportunity while on foot to work the 17th Street location in Midtown. A councilman called the situation dangerous for the motorists and for the teens. Either we're going to own the situation with the water boys or we're not. And we need to stop it. The police won't, 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 won't want to do nothing because they're afraid to. To me, if it happened to my wife, I hope she pulls a gun out and shoots her fannies. That's what I'd do. I would put up with that crap. Now that guy's going to be called a racist. They're calling that guy a racist. That guy's a racist. But name me one dude, one gangster dude you know. Or one street dude, or as y'all call him, a real one. One stepper. Where well, that happened to his girl. And she come home and tell him about it. Just tell me one where that situation don't get ugly. But the white dude are racist. The police won't, 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 won't want to do nothing because they're afraid to. To me, if it happened to my wife, I hope she pulls a gun out and shoots her fannies. That's what I'd do. I wouldn't put up with that crap. Now, the Bottoms administration has told the police department they're not going to tolerate the water boys anymore. There was a slowdown in the activity in late summer, but now in the fall, we're seeing them back. That don't seem like nice guys to me, man. That don't seem like little entrepreneurs, man. I know Keisha Bottoms, she got to say that because she woke and she don't want, you know, we going to come out. If you tell the truth to us, if you tell the truth to us, we hate the truth. We hate it. We going to come for you. We going to try to destroy you, tell us the truth. So Keisha Bottoms, she can't be like, she got, these are entrepreneurs. <laughs> Man, get in the comment section, man. Like, subscribe. Meek, man. Look, man. I can't knock you, Meek. You did what you had to do, man. A lot of people don't know what they talking about on the internet. Trashing you for the way you handled that. That could have... If you would have showed any weakness, Meek. If you would have showed any kind of weakness, Meek. Them little boys would. <laughs> them little boys would have smelled that amount. First of all, they would have smelled it as soon as they came into the car. You see the one little boy, he about to even kick the car or say cuss Meek out, but he thought it, he changed his mind. He he held his he held it in. These little boys can smell. A, they can smell it a mile away, man. If you sweet, if you sweet for it, they can smell it a mile away, man. So Meek must have been exhibiting some, emitting some testosterone for them boys not to put the pressure, pressure, pressure on them like that. Yeah, man, make sure you come here when you want the real story, man. You know, adult hip-hop coverage hip-hop news, adult, from adult perspective, man, 42 years old, man, <laughs> come on, man, hip-hop from an adult perspective, only here, Off Nation TV, man, 
Hit the like button, subscribe. Peace. I'm out.